I never thought that comes today when I have to raise my voice in defense of Call of Duty and the developers, but I recently saw an article from Polygon that strikes me as odd. And I know, I'm late on this one. The thing is, there are problems with Call of Duty. The last game of the series was absolutely meh, and recent actions with trying to milk every last cent out of the ever-shrinking fanbase hasn't really improved my opinion of the developers, the publishers and the franchise as a whole. There is criticism that has to be made, especially of the recent blind hype surrounding Call of Duty World War II. They change the setting and throw around phrases like going back to the roots and suddenly everyone forgets that it is still the same publisher that is selling a $15 DLC of remastered content and reintroduced microtransactions into an ancient game. The people who expressed their hate so confidently a few months ago are now pre-ordering, even though they haven't been shown anything substantial. People were talking about how amazing the new zombie mode is, but everything they have seen so far was this picture. How do you come to any conclusion from this? Unless they show off actual gameplay and go into a bit more detail about the whole going back to the roots, I will remain skeptical. Is this back to the roots just the same shit as usual, just in World War 2? Or are they really going back to the roots? A bit slower gameplay? Maybe even a health bar? No bloody screen? Abandoning kill streaks? Or bring back vehicles? Who knows? I'm going to read you the article from Polygon now. The article has very harsh criticism for the game and you guys tell me if this is valid criticism or not, cause I don't know. I can tell if the authors of the article are even interested in this type of game or if it's just about their politics. Call of Duty World War II's diversity is nothing more than marketing. A supporting cast just checks off the boxes. Since American pop culture took control of World War II as a narrative, it has always been presented as a white man's war. From Sands of Iwo Jima to The Great Escape, The Thin Red Line to Saving Private Ryan. That's the perspective you get. Call of Duty World War II isn't going to change this, but it sure wants the credit for trying. Activision and Sledgehammer Games pulled the wrapper of their glamour franchise today, and despite the exclusively white and male makeup of those doing so on stage, they want you to think it is a more inclusive tale of World War II. It may yet be, we don't know until November 3rd. For now, the tone-deaf manner in which this all-white production checked the diversity boxes, women, an African-American unit and even a child, reduced everyone else to being a bullet point on the back of a box. Yet another feature. We've got a private multiplayer beta. We've got zombies, we've got black people, we've got women, we've got a Jew. It reads like a marketer's checklist suitable for diversity. A rooster of token characters that doesn't acknowledge their experience more than it pats the publisher on the back. Sledgehammer staffers repeated the references to Brotherhood also speaks clarity to the fact that this game will be told from a very traditional perspective. From what we saw and heard about this game today, that tradition doesn't genuinely include brothers of other races or brothers who don't identify as male. Wouldn't they be a sister then? It is important to note that segregation was still very much enforced during the time period, including within the American military. And judging by the attention Sledgehammer is paying to the period firearms and the sounds they make, Call of Duty World War II is all about preserving historical authenticity. That leaves fighters of color, fighters who are women, in supporting roles. It's not even known if they are playable. Playability is the special obligation in interactive entertainment in telling a story. An obligation that movies like The Guns of Navarone or The Longest Day don't face, even in hindsight 50 years later. A lot of different people are going to play Call of Duty World War II. Just because brothers of different races didn't fight alongside each other doesn't mean that players in 2017 shouldn't inhabit and absorb all their experiences. Sledgehammer Games' top studio brass Glenn Schofield and Michael Condrey talked up Call of Duty World War II's new features improvements over previous iterations and all the other stuff Call of Duty fans want to know. Then came, like an awkward Thanksgiving dinner conversation, the conspicuous and almost patronizing mentions of race and gender, again reflecting back to the white male perspective. We also fold in a story of diverse and global characters. Conroy said of the cast of characters after talking about its largely American male cast. He proceeded to talk about a British male soldier. Schofield followed this with a reference to the game's female lead. 
Rousseau, the powerful female leader of the French resistance. He said as if reading from a cue card. Powerful female, we get it. And that was it. No other diverse and global characters were referenced. Instead, Schofield and Condray were swapped out so that the game's true stars could be shuffled on stage for their scripted interviews. Each one armed with buzzwords. Three white actors, including B-lister Josh Duhamel, replaced the two white men who previously steered the conversation. Why mention the female leader at all? Only to shift gears and deprioritize any importance she holds in the narrative. Nothing in this big reveal event was shy about telling Call of Duty World War II's perspective from the white American frontline of combat. It came across as a gross attempt to assuage any concerns about Call of Duty's overwhelming whiteness. Something last year's entry, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, set in futuristic space, actually addressed. But probably because it wasn't burdened by a conflict grounded in segregated history. References to the experience of persons of color and women in the Second World War are well and good. But when white men get the solemn treatment of brotherhood and black men and women get the hey we've got them too marketing cadence, it all reeks of insincerity. Especially when not a single woman or person of color was presented on stage, which would have given some weight to the important role they are set to play in Call of Duty World War II. Is this really video game journalism? Is this criticism of video games based on facts and features of the game? Or is this just complaining about someone else's art that is not pandering to one's political ideology enough? Call of Duty is an action game. When I go and play the Call of Duty single player, I do it with the same expectation I would go and see a Fast and Furious movie with. I want a cool story with badass characters who do amazing shit I couldn't do in my dreams. I want to be wowed, not lectured or propagandized, except for subliminal propaganda about how amazing the US military is. <laughs> okay, jokes aside. Nobody cares about the character's backstory that much. How they feel, where they came from, where they were born or what their gender identity is, if this, this is not part of the game. You are fighting a war. This is not the issue at hand. It is absolutely irrelevant for the game. I feel kind of sorry for the developers because they are in a damned if you do and damned if you don't situation. If they go ahead and have no diversity, that is problematic. If they go ahead and have diversity, it's problematic as well. The problem the developers have when they look at the battles is that in Europe the majority of fighting was done by white men. The US Army was racially segregated for the most part. The only infantry unit that had black people in it was the 92nd Infantry Division and they fought in Italy. A diverse story about the invasion of Normandy, D-Day especially, might be hard to write. The only African-American unit that took part in the battles of the 6th of June 1944 was an anti-aircraft unit. Correct me if I'm wrong there, but that's the only unit I know about. So the developer's hands are tied in a lot of situations. I am sure you can implement the dynamics of racial segregation into a game when the writing is good. But with this difficult topic, I am sure they would like to avoid that. The required good writing could be the problem here. COD might not be the right medium to transport this kind of topic. Because even if they have, let's say, a fight between a white and a black US soldier, it can only be mentioning the topic, acknowledging that it's there. And there's the core of the problem. When you touch this topic, it is very hard to do it right. Now that they have introduced diverse characters into a World War II shooter, it's not sincere enough. I even have to somewhat agree with the authors of the article, because I can't get around the feeling that it has all been introduced just to appease the so-called PC crowd or, less charitable, appease the SJWs. The authors of the article point out a lot of flaws with the representation of minorities and women, but they fail to tell us how to do it better. They tell us that they should have had a woman on stage, but that doesn't do anything about the game. In the end, they are actually complaining about a product they haven't even seen yet. So it comes down to, oh, I feel like it's not good, or I assume it won't be good in the end. And even though I have to admit that I agree with the authors that the diversity feels forced in, I have to ask them, isn't this what you wanted? Isn't this what you have advocated for so long? Forcing everyone to include diversity quotas instead of making your own games which are diverse? When I read articles like these, I always get the impression that it's 
never good enough. No matter what you do, they will always find a reason to be offended. There's always something, some tiny bit. Another thing I have to bring to notice is the language used in the article. Statements like Call of Duty's overwhelming whiteness and the general emphasis on white give me the impression, and maybe I'm wrong here, but do the authors have a problem with white people in general? Go ahead and read the article, and instead of white, put in any other group of people. Sounds pretty bigoted, doesn't it? Call of Duty's overwhelming blackness, or Jewness, or Muslimness, or whatever, Asianness? Yeah, it sounds pretty bigoted, doesn't it? So. Go, go to the authors, go and read your article and replace white with anything else. If it sounds bigoted, you might want to rethink your article. The language in the article sounds very accusatory, almost as if they were disgusted. You are not really building bridges here, and you are not really convincing me of your point. Cause, um, uh, well, you know what, let's bring this to an end by just shitting on the article. The tone doth manner in which this all-white production... Uh, I guess he's just well tanned then. It couldn't be that the article is using unfounded polemic, couldn't it? Guess what? This black man is responsible for keeping everything authentic in this all-white production. <laughs> oh, and Asian people are just white too, aren't they? Seriously, check your privilege. Well, you know what? Here's the article in a nutshell. Call of Duty World War II's diversity is nothing more than marketing, but we won't know until November 3rd. That's some great A gaming journalism right there. Polygon, you have the best authors of the whole gaming industry. Thank you for this amazing piece of journalism. I am overwhelmed. So see you guys next time. Till then, I'd be interested in reading your opinion on this matter in the comment section down below. Have a nice day, and as always, goodbye and guten Tag.